A. Smith Show. Stop. Aggressivecommercial.com. On the line with us right now, uh, NFL analyst extraordinaire for the family, former Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots, for some inexplicable reason, probably home, nostalgia and all of that stuff. He actually played for the New York Jets. Uh, but he's with us now. The one and only Damian Woody is on the line with us right now. What's up, big boy? How are you? You know, I'm in a very bad mood. Why is that? Okay, I'm in a very bad mood because here it is. You're out in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. With you know, with the sunshine, beautiful weather, right, beach right, right. and everything, right, right, and right. You didn't right. even holler at your boy. Excuse I mean, me. I thought I was your partner. You know, there first, of all, your first, boy. Of all, first of all, a couple of things. I mean, number one, what, number the, one, what's going on with that? Number one, maybe if you wore a tie more, well, you would have no, been invited you, out no, here. Maybe if you wore a tie more, you I mean, know, it does have something here? to do. It does have something to do with it. You show you you need to be more respectful well, of your elders no, and conduct no, you yourself be, like you the protege that you are. When you're talking to me. Excuse me? Did you raise your voice at me? Did you raise your voice at me? You gotta watch your mouth. You gotta watch your mouth. Don't make me deal with you, Damien Woody. Please. You understand? I know you won't. I know you won't. That's what I'm telling you. And number two, you got NFL responsibilities. It's not my fault that the Rams or the Chargers haven't given you much to talk about thus far this year. That ain't my problem. Maybe you should be calling them. If they gave you more to talk about, maybe you'd be out here and you wouldn't need to be having me call you to come out here for basketball where that ain't your lane. Oh, but you well, listen, basketball is always my – it don't matter what it is, okay, especially when we're talking about my Lakers. That's always yeah, yeah, my lane. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, okay, okay. You don't start us something now, Damien. You don't start us something. I'm going to test your basketball knowledge. First things first. How'd you feel about how LeBron James performed Tuesday night? Since you since you love the basketball and that's your Lakers, it's your Lakers. How, how, how'd you feel about how how LeBron performed Tuesday night? <sighs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You opened but, it. You but, opened it. You did well, it. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna fake it. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be up front. And I was disappointed as hell when I was watching that game. Here it is, LeBron. Here it is. You've been all. You've been. You've been off since April. First time in I don't know how long that LeBron has been off for that period of time. I know you in your 17th season. You feel you should be feeling rejuvenated somewhat, okay, opening night in the Staples Center with the Los Angeles Clippers with Kawhi Leonard staring right at you, and you deferring the whole, the whole game, particularly in the second half. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't understand. I don't, I don't want to hear anything about trying to get other people going. What do you mean? You got the, you got the Los Angeles Clippers trying to – Make an assault on our city, on Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. sitting here passing the ball and deferring to other people. You're LeBron James. All right? Not you just, don't defer not, to not anyone. Not just that, Damien. Not just that. Do you know what the people out here in L.A. are trying to tell me? And Keyshawn Johnson, your, your, your former contemporary, your colleague here at ESPN. You know what Keyshawn Johnson came on national television this morning and said? They ain't no, they ain't no rivalry. There's no rivalry. It's the Lakers Clippers. There ain't no rivalry right now. Well, both of them being title contenders, playing in the same arena, playing in the same city. Well, there ain't can, no rivalry. Can I tell, wait a minute. Can I tell you something? I'm gonna just and, and this is just you know as, as a Lakers fan, I'm just speaking to all the Laker nation. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm getting tired of hearing about the whole band. You know how many banners we got? I get it. Yes, we dominate as far as championships, and we have the the lore, and we have all you know all, all you know all that type of stuff. But right here, right now, the Clippers ain't playing. The yeah. Clippers are not playing around. Yeah. You can't sit back on your banners and say, oh, well, you know, we're not worried about them. The hell you shouldn't be worried about the Clippers. So that's the thing that disappoints me, especially when I hear all, you know, Lakers fans is, well, we, you know, the Clippers are on our rivals. They can't, they're not in that area code because all the banners. Excuse me? I mean, this team is for real. They're coming right now. So I'm just disappointed in a lot of people as far as the Lakers are concerned. My last comment, my last discussion uh, and question to you on this matter involving LeBron James is this. It's not even so much the team. And I do understand it's just one game of 82. I totally get that. But I'm saying you got Kawhi trolling you. 
He coming into your town. They got New Balance commercials aimed at Nike. They talking about this is his town they got, now. He what got have Terminator you? commercials. He got Stephen Terminator a. commercials. A Terminator. They, got, they got everything. And it's like he's coming directly at LeBron. And I'm like, there are moments when you are a high-end competitor where you look at the coach and it's like, excuse me, hold on for a second. I, I get the game plan and all that, but we're going to put this on pause just for a second here. I, I, I need to check this brother right now. I got to deal with this brother right here. I don't know who the hell he think he is. Let me remind these people of who the hell I am. You can do that even within the context of trying to win a basketball game. And that was my issue with LeBron James Tuesday night. I don't think he's over the hill. I don't think he's done. I still know he's great. I still think he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest in the world. My whole point is you just going to stand still and defer while this brother has arrived in L.A. and has and, and has made it very, very clear he's coming for whatever crown you think you have and he's coming right at you and you have no answer? I have a problem with that. Like I said, I was thoroughly disgusted, all right? You could have taken, if you wanted to, you know, defer, you could have deferred after the Clippers game. But the Clippers game was a game to make a statement, to send a message across the bow to let them boys know we still run this right now. That's right. That's right. Damian Woody right here with Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Let's get into some football talk right here. You saw Aaron Rodgers last week. You saw how he performed. What are your thoughts about the Green Bay Packers in light of what you've seen from Aaron Rodgers? Stephen A., it's scary. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's good. Listen. If Aaron Rodgers is cooking like that, combined with that defense, whoa! I'm sitting back the whole game watching Green, watching Aaron Rodgers just just cutting it up, just being surgical, and I'm sitting there like, okay, this is a problem because if the really the whole during this whole process. And it's really been a process offensively, still trying to get Aaron Rodgers and, and that whole offense clicking. But, I mean, Aaron Rodgers just – it seemed like last this, – this past game, it was Aaron Rodgers just took the whole thing over. And if that, if that continues to be the case to go along with the way the Green Bay Packers have been playing defense, we might have a new, team, new favorite team in the NFC right now. The New that's Orleans what Saints. That's what we some might some, right some would argue that the New Orleans Saints are looking better than anybody right now. And now they're talking about Drew Brees coming back. Now, I imagine with them having won five straight with Teddy Bridgewater behind under center, that there's no way on earth they would allow Drew Brees to come back unless he was 100%, particularly since I believe their next game is against Arizona. And then after that, they have a bye week. You would think that they would let Drew Brees wait another two weeks. So by letting him play this week and purport- purportedly, to me, he must be 100% if you're willing to take that chance. But what are your thoughts about New Orleans comparing them to what you've seen from Green Bay? Well, I just, you know, it, to me, um, you got to give a lot of credit to Sean Payton because the one thing about the game of football is everyone is injured, okay? Mm-hmm. And every one of you want to use injuries as an excuse. Yep. You see what Sean Payton is doing? They went to went into Chicago, okay. Backup quarterback, okay, no Alvin Kamara, and beat the brakes off the Chicago Bears in Chicago. What does that tell you, Stephen A? And then what that, it tells me is that Mitchell Trubisky stinks. Well, that also, I mean, that's, that's what it tells that's a me. Whole another conversation, okay. That's a whole another conversation. Well, at least he stunk we, this past weekend. Oh yeah, well he well he's awful, and I and. Listen, they're gonna they're gonna come to regret passing over to Sean Watson and Patrick Mahomes from that draft. But as far as the New Orleans Saints are concerned, Sean Payton is doing maybe his best coaching job of his career, um, uh, particularly last week against the Chicago Bears. And and Teddy Bridgewater has just been tremendous. It seems like every week he's he's gaining more confidence, utilizing uh, the different play, uh, playmakers in the in the offense and everyone and. and I would say most importantly, the Saints' defense has been outstanding. They're playing with so much confidence on all three levels. Uh, that defense has been spectacular, and it's really been the rock um, for that New Orleans Saints team, holding it down uh, until Drew Brees gets back, and we're, we're going to see what happens. 
Damian Woody right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Staying within the NFC, I'm just reading this article here with Emmanuel Sanders talking about how thrilled he is uh, to be a member of the San Francisco 49ers having just gotten traded from the Denver Broncos. I'm reading it on NFL.com. What are your thoughts about him landing with the 49ers and what it's going to do with that franchise, particularly when you consider the fact that on a defensive side of the ball in San Francisco, they're already stellar. If the offense gets going, Lord knows what they could do. Yeah, I, I really like that move, Stephen A. I mean, we, you know, the one thing about the San Francisco 49ers, they're undefeated. undefeated. Their defense is elite. Mm-hmm. Um, they're part, second only to the New England Patriots defensively. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they got the best rushing attack in the National Football League, mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion. Um, so the only component of it that really hasn't jumped out yet is, is the passing game with Jimmy G. Now you mean point star, Jimmy? You, you mean porn star Jimmy? Porn star Jimmy, who who got that big contract, he hasn't been bad, but he's. We need to see him ascend. But I think one of the issues with the San Francisco 49ers, they didn't really have a true legitimate number one receiver. They had a bunch of guys who are you know pretty good players, but Emmanuel Sanders is a guy that can assume that role with the San Francisco 49ers. And if Jimmy G gets going with the with the passing game to, to go along with the you know George Kittle and uh, you know, like I said, Emmanuel Sanders of the world, Debo Samuels. Now th- that's a scary team looking forward. And they made a trade looking f- looking down the line, saying, you know what, we got to contend with the New Orleans Saints. We got to contend with the Green Bay Packers, and op- ultimately try to get to a Super Bowl where you might see a New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. So I commend them for making that trade. Demi Woody, I got I to gotta admit that I didn't even see the Rams as a part of the equation based on how Seattle and San Fran were looking within the same division. But then they went out and they got Jalen Ramsey. And I saw this guy defend against Julio Jones. And Julio Jones got him a couple of times, including a 39-yard catch. But I got to tell you something. Watching him and the infusion of energy and confidence he seems to have instilled in this franchise – I mean, I think that we might have to pay attention to the Rams again with Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald on the defensive side of the ball uh, if they can get anything out of uh, Jared Goff offensively. What are your thoughts about the Rams right now? Well, listen, I'm I'm never going to dismiss the, the Los Angeles Rams because it's a team that represented the NFC in the Super Bowl. They got an outstanding coach in Sean McVay. There's no question about it. And they have a lot of talented players over there. Uh, I still I, – I, I do question offensively. They haven't been able to run the ball uh, like they've been doing in the past, which is a big part of the big part of the problem with the with the uh, Los Angeles Rams team because they're predicated. They want to run the ball and play action pass. That's their offense. That's what they want to do. And to this point in the season, they haven't really been able to do that. Now, granted, they had that lights out performance last week against the Atlanta Falcons, but who hasn't beat down the Atlanta Falcons? This year, the Atlanta Falcons have been atrocious this year. So um, sometimes you need games like that where you kind of, you know, get jump all over a team and that can kind of ignite you. Um, so I'm I'm in wait and see mode with the with the Los Angeles Rams and see what they do with a more competent opponent. Does Atlanta Falcons owner or Arthur Blank need to make a change with his head coach and Quinn in light of their one and six start? Um. I would say, yeah, but I don't think it will happen during the season. Mm-hmm. I think that when you look at the amount of money that Arthur Blank has invested in this team, whether it be the stadium, paying Matt Ryan, paying Julio Jones, um, he's, he's doled out a lot of money for a lot of people. And, and, and coach head coach Dan Quinn made wholesale changes to his staff this offseason. He fought, like, fired his offensive coordinator, fired – the defensive coordinator, and fire the special teams coordinator. He is himself the defensive coordinator, and the defense is one of the worst in the National Football League. So we always say when you make wholesale changes and things don't don't turn around, who's the next guy to go? The head coach. Mm. Before I get to the AFC, I got a couple of intriguing questions I have to ask you staying in the NFC. Cam Newton, in light of how Kyle Allen has looked in Carolina, undefeated since Cam Newton has gone down. Um, Either undefeated or lost one game only. I forgot which one it was. What are your thoughts about what Carolina should do with Cam Newton in light of how he was looking, uh, in light of how Kyle Allen is looking? Well, Stephen A., you know, you're a sports, you know, 
you're a sports guru, and I'm pretty sure you heard the, the term Wally Pip. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what was was what's happening in in, Carol, in Charlotte right now is uh it, is what we call Wally Pip, where Cam is out and Kyle Allen is undefeated. I've seen this script before. When I was with the Patriots, Drew Blesso was a hundred million dollar man. Mo Lewis, a linebacker from New York, just knocked him out. In a Tom Brady era, and the rest is history. Now, I'm not saying that Kyle Allen is Tom Brady, but what I am saying is when you have a when you have a team that's undefeated, and the fact that if this thing keeps going, you can't change quarterbacks. You can't do it. It's just that's they're not going to do that. And Cam is. He has one more year on his deal, and mm-hmm. you got a young quarterback in Kyle Allen. I'm telling you, if this thing keeps going, where the Carolina Panthers keep winning, the Carolina Panthers are going to have to have, going to have an interesting decision about Cam Newton after the season. Damian Woody, right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. What the hell are the Chiefs doing, uh, letting uh, Patrick Mahomes practice? Why is he even out there? You know, we had a spirited uh, discussion about this this topic on Get Up this morning, man. Mm-hmm. And um, I will say this: as a former player, players play, players want to play. They don't want to feel like they're letting their teammates down. If they have any inkling that they can get out there and contribute, they will. But I will also say, on the flip side, that sometimes an organization has to save a player from the, from itself. And I, we've seen video of, of Patrick Mahomes in practice, and it looked like he's, I mean, very ginger. You know, he's moving very gingerly on that leg. Listen, if I'm the coaching staff there, you got to think long and hard about the long-term effects of your franchise quarterback if you if you allow him to go out there, um, you know, this upcoming week. So um, I'm sure Patrick Mahomes is trying, is fighting to get out there, uh, but. It's going to be a tough decision with Andy Reid and, and the team doctors to, you know, to make sure that they, they put Patrick Mahomes in a position where he's not hurting himself further. Damian Woody right here with Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Muhammad Sanu, I never had a problem with him. Um, I looked at him in Atlanta. I know he wasn't a Julio Jones. Uh, he may not even be a Calvin Ridley, but he can play. He can ball. And now he's no longer in Atlanta. He's a member of the New England Patriots, who obviously got news that Josh Gordon would miss the rest of the season due to being on IR. What are your thoughts about um, Muhammad Sanu in New England? I think he'd be a very big uh, acquisition for the New England Patriots. Listen, this is a guy who's, you know, he's not, I don't consider him a number one, but he's a, he's a type of guy. He's a typical New England type of guy. He's tough. Um, he's durable. And he's the type of guy that he's going to do his job. Um, he's not a speed burner, but he makes the tough catches. He, he plays really well between the numbers. And, you know, this is what New England really needs because anyone who's watched the Patriots, their defense is their defense is playing at a historical level right now. If they continue with this pace, they'll actually um, beat the 2,000 Ravens for the least points given up in a season. But on offense, they haven't been um, that impressive offensively. So adding a guy like you know Sanu to the offense will give Tom Brady more weapons, and and uh, hopefully that'll you know help jumpstart that offense some, particularly in the passing game. I actually think that. Tom Brady has gotten a bad rap this season because I think that I I view it from the standpoint, look at what he has to deal with. Look at these people bothering this man. I mean, you got guys retiring, guys that are injured. You know, Gronkowski is out. He's retired. Gordon's out. He's injured. Antonio Brown is exiled. Julian Edelman is out there battling for him, but he's not 100%. I mean, what, what can we expect this guy to do? That's my mentality. What about yours? Well, Stephen, you only as, I always say you're only as good as the people that you're surrounded with. And Tom Brady, no one can question Tom Brady's greatness. He's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. But when you have constant, you know, flux around you, your left tackle was out. Um, you, tight, you know, tight ends. You don't know who's playing tight end. The wide receiver position is in flux. When you have all these different positions that are in flux. Of course it's going to affect your play somewhat because the game of football is all about chemistry and continuity. So I think once they get settled in on guys, once guys get back healthy and Muhammad Sanu gets you know, uh, acclimated to that New England offense, then I think you'll see 
once we get to Thanksgiving and beyond, Tom Brady will he'll be full steam ahead moving forward. Appreciate the time, man. As always, man. We'll holler later, man. I hope your Lakers don't. I'm telling you, where I'm gonna lose my mind, Damian. If LeBron sit up there and goes all out Friday and he's aggressive offensively against Utah Friday, I'm gonna lose it. Cause I'm be like, where the hell was that Tuesday? Where was that Tuesday? That's why I'm gonna be Damian. But you know, Stephen, they listen to all of this stuff. When they tell you they don't listen, they don't hear. It's, you know, it's a bunch of BS. Of course they, they hear do. all this stuff. So why would you doubt? Why would you doubt that ha- not happen? How about that? How about that? Appreciate you, bro. Thanks yeah, so no much. Yeah, no problem, brother. 888 say ESPN. It's 888 Back to your calls and more in a moment. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, when it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need to get to your short list of qualified candidates. 